Alright folks, it's time to talk about female representation in video games. Now, before you get too excited, let go of those joysticks. This isn't a video about boobs. I'm saving that for a different video. Right now, we're diving headfirst into the fiery debate over the damsel in distress trope in video games. I aimed for the middle ground, but let's face it, I'm a gamer and kind of a moron. So if you're lobbing counter arguments my way, I'll just say it right now, I'm going to die on this hill. Picture this, it's the 1980s, video games are the new cool kid on the block, and they've settled on the young male demographic. Why? Option, adventure, and you guessed it, saving the damsel in distress. Because nothing says heroic like rescuing someone who's been conveniently kidnapped for the plot's sake. Let's be honest, if your favorite barista got snatched by a giant turtle dragon, you'd probably want to do something about it, right? And thus, the classic storyline is born. Hero rescues the princess, Hero gets a peck on the cheek, and we are left to assume that they bumped uglies when the credits rolled. It was simple, effective, and gave our pixelated protagonists enough of a reason to jump over pits and battle it out with oddly shaped enemies. Fast forward to the narrative extravaganza of the late 1990s and beyond. Games like Final Fantasy VII and Bioshock Infinite had plots thicker than my skull, but Lo and behold, the damsel in distress trope hasn't entirely left the building, just hopped into the bathroom and changed its clothing. Sure, Aerith gets kidnapped by the baddies, but she has more depth to her than that. And Elizabeth, well, she's literally bending the reality and shaping the entire story of Bioshock by the end. So, let's have a minute and talk about our modern conundrum. The ultra-strong, seemingly flawless female characters that we see in modern games. Enter Nadine Ross from Uncharted 4. She's tough, she's fierce, and she can throw Drake out a window like a discarded cabbage. Cool, right? Well, no, because she is actually a terrible person. She is motivated by nothing but money and does all sorts of bad stuff, then exits the story with an unearned sense of moral superiority after locking Drake in a burning room. Where is her comeuppance? Where is her character arc? She begins the story as a bad person and ends it as a bad person. He went the polar opposite of being the damsel in distress and ended up landing in the narrative septic tank. So what do we do? Let's not toss the damsel trope out the window, but we do have to mix it up. Characters can be strong, vulnerable, heroic, or in need of a little help. It's called being human, or you know, whatever species your character is. Modern stories require modern characters, but that doesn't mean we have to take those modern characters and not let them be influenced by these simple story concepts. Aerith was not diminished as a character by needing to be saved by Cloud. On the opposite side of things, Aya Bria didn't need to be saved by anyone in the story of Parasite Eve, and it wouldn't have made any sense if she had to be, but she does rely on her friends for support. What do we do? We keep on keeping on save the princess sometimes. Have the princess save someone else other times. Let's have some variety. Just don't make it suck. <laughs>